you had to, if I had to put up an infographic, bing! Heather's top three tips, is he savage? What would they be? What? What would your- Just kidding. Uh, oh. <laughs> that is a great question, whether or not humor is appropriate. And I don't think I will ever be offended with humor at dark situations. Um, in fact, I think my therapist thinks I need to work on that. <laughs> She's like, um, this isn't funny. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Destiny and I'm here with my friend, Heather. Hi. How's it going? Good. Heather is my dear friend and pianist and we recorded an album together. You should go buy it and listen to it. <laughs> yeah. Do a little album plug at the beginning of my video. It's called Bach to Barn Burners. It's really cool. We almost got a Grammy and almost showed up to the Grammys in a meat suit, like a Lady Gaga, but decided not to. Just kidding. Yeah. It's really close though. Yeah. So I invited Heather here today to talk about how to listen. <laughs> Aww. Uh, yes. Um, and my cat is meowsing. So as you all know, I've been doing a lot of videos where I talk about what it's like to live the human experience or struggle with anxiety or depression. Some videos, we also talk about happy things. We don't always have to talk about that, but I think a useful topic for other people to hear about, uh, would be how to be a friend to somebody who is struggling with anxiety and depression. And I think Heather has been a really good friend for me when I've gone through my hard times and called you on the phone blubbering like a fool. <laughs> You've always uh, given me some really helpful insight and also just been a really good listener. I feel like it's your forte to be a good listener, um, which is probably why you're such an excellent pianist and following all of the <laughs> that I do when I play. I do play well with others. <laughs> Here's a cat. Kitty. Uh, so I would just, I would love to know what is it like for you when I call and you answer and I'm sobbing on the other, on the other end of the phone. You mean like every other day? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I would just first like to say that I'm honored that you think I'm a good listener. Uh, I think that that's one of my favorite qualities in other people is when you really feel like they're listening to you. That's all anyone really wants is to be heard and understood. And I don't know, I feel like it's probably the key to world peace is listening, hearing, understanding. <laughs> but maybe that's lofty. Uh, but I, I'm honored also when, when a friend, and especially you, does call me in a state of distress uh, because, you know, I, I feel trusted. And, um, you know, everyone's natural impulse is to want to do something and to say something to make someone feel better. Uh, and that's definitely my impulse, too, is to say, well, it's probably not as bad as you think. And, well, maybe you should concentrate on what's positive or maybe find a silver lining and that's not overly helpful a lot of the time for people to hear. I certainly don't want to hear that when I'm having a difficult time. I don't want to hear someone tell me at that moment of distress <laughs> to find the silver, silver lining. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like smack or punch or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like face push. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know, something that I struggle with, uh, is just to have the self-discipline to be quiet and <laughs> be attentive. And, uh, you know, sometimes, um, you feel when, when you're speaking to, speaking to someone, you, you either get a sense that they're listening and processing or that they're actually just formulating their next sentence. <laughs> mm. um, and it's to me I, I i can really tell when someone is just thinking of what they might say next mm -hmm. so uh to be a good listener i think is to put a pause on that impulse to say something uh, as well as intended as it might be but to pause that and listen 
and allow for some silence and allow the person to just, you know, I'm saying all this now and I'm hoping I actually do some portion of this. But you do. <laughs> allow the person to get off their chest the entirety of what it is that's um, mm-hmm. bothersome. Yeah, I think you do that for sure. That's why I, I mean, I wouldn't, if you were a bad listener, I wouldn't be like, hey, why don't you make this video with me and tell other people how to listen? <laughs> What is it like? So I think it's really useful to ask people who are good listeners, what it's like for them when you are sharing something with somebody and you can tell that you're not being heard. What is a feeling or some, so for someone who, you know, cause sometimes I'll talk to people and I'm not sure if they're listening. And then I don't know whether or not to trust my instincts if they're listening or not. I mean, there's obvious things like if they're looking around, I know they're they're not listening. But are there any other things that you notice when people aren't listening that you could tell others to sort of be on the lookout for? I think your point about looking around is uh, yeah, not to be underestimated. When someone is not, I mean, on Zoom, it's a little hard. It's like, where do I look to make eye contact with you? But I know. But looking at someone and you know, not just hearing their words, but internalizing physical cues, um, body language, that's all part of listening. And when those elements are kind of disengaged or if people are disengaged from those elements, you don't fully feel uh, like the person's invested in listening. Um, And my response to that is to be done talking. Yeah. That from someone because, you know, why? why go on <laughs> right in one phase of counseling that i went through at one point one of the basic exercises was to um repeat back what you heard someone say this is like hope there's no like actual therapist listening to your podcast right now because this is probably like even before 101 but uh, so the exercise is for you to say something and for me to repeat back what you said. But first, I myself would say, okay, what I hear you saying is this. And then you would come back and say, yes, that's what I said. Or more often than not, not exactly. What I said was, and you would try again to express your mm-hmm. point. And I would respond, okay, what I now heard you say was this. So it's, um, and it was really surprising to me in that exercise, even myself, the good listener, <laughs> um, just because of, you know, our own inner monologues as you know, listeners, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, secondary participant in the dialogue, uh, the spin that your mind puts on something uh, is often not an accurate representation of what the speaker just said, and you know, it doesn't have to be malintended, mm-hmm. um, but your interpretation of what someone said may not exactly be accurate. So just the, and it takes a lot of discipline and it's awkward at first to do this exercise, but I actually kind of got into it, um, to say, what I heard you say was this, mm-hmm. and then to give the other person space to say, not exactly. Mm. No, uh, again, I don't always do that. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> have to be in a pretty centered, uh, patient place to be able to do that. And like I said, I don't always succeed. But you but, try, which is great. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. It's a really eye-opening exercise. Just the sheer number of times that I failed to, not just me, but you know, that the listener fails to grasp the entirety of what the speaker is saying yeah um, yeah anyway eye-opening definitely like communication 101 (laughs) right and i think that goes to so you know if i'm depressed or upset and i call a friend and i'm talking to them uh if a friend tries to offer advice the sometimes the advice doesn't work because they're not or they didn't hear exactly what you were saying so i think I mean, I, I think my biggest piece of advice for people is um, when they're listening to someone who's really struggling is exactly what you said, is just to give them space to talk and let them know 
that you're hearing them and understanding and and I think being quick to jump to offer solutions or silver linings uh, can sometimes feel like you're just minimizing their feelings um, or diminishing their feelings. So I don't know, I think waiting to say things or just listening in a supportive manner is good. <laughs> so what I hear you saying is, <laughs> is that a listener should not jump to offer their own solutions, but instead should allow a platform for you to express yourself and to maybe even vent. Yes, and I think, so I mean, I appreciate advice from people, uh, but there's a way to give it. And I think when people give advice, they'll say things like, well, you should go and do this. And that's, that's not a helpful, <laughs> that's not helpful. The kind of advice that I appreciate is when someone says something like, I've experienced something like that, and here's what I've done that helps me. It might not work for you, but you could try it. it I, there's just something very, when someone is like, you should do this, it feels very uh, disconnected. Like, how do you know what I should do? You're yeah. not me. Yeah, um, yeah I guess if, if all listeners could be like you, it would be better. Because <laughs> I don't ever get that from you. I mean, you, you always give a very, uh, I don't, I don't quite know how to describe it. It's like magic. It's like magic. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is, people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's just, it's almost, I think it's empathy. You know what? Empathy, empathy is an important human emotion and skill and trait to have. And I think the best way to be a good listener is, is to empathize and let the person know that you're hearing them. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself can be comforting enough to help the other person know that there's someone there. I just had Winnie the Pooh Bear and Piglet flash into my mind. <laughs> you know, that little cartoon where Piglet's like, I don't know what to say, but Pooh's like, it's okay, just the fact that you're here is enough. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, it just strikes me because your cat is right there. I know, well, and you you yes. can see me petting her the whole time. Oh, you mean Stetson or this one? Well, Stetson, he's there like a lump. <laughs> But I was just thinking, like, isn't that kind of why we have pets, too? It's like, they don't ever say anything, <laughs> offer anything, except they're just there. Yes. <laughs> they're just there. And, uh, yeah, th there's comfort in that. And uh, think about that a lot. Like, what am I getting out of my pets? No active participation, <laughs> but just being there. Yeah. One thing I was going to say is that I feel like some people are afraid to listen to their friends with problems because of what they take on themselves. And by the boundary issue, what I mean is I, I think if I'm afraid to listen to somebody because what they're saying is stressing me out, that means I need to work on my boundary issues because I don't have to let what they're saying stress me out. Um, so what I'm afraid of is I might be so stressed out by what they're saying that I will then withdraw and not listen to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is something to guard against because you don't have to take it on in that manner. Really, the only thing that you have to do is just be there and listen and you're not expected to fix it. And if you don't know how to fix it or feel like it's too overwhelming for you, you can easily say to them, I think you need to seek a professional's advice on this because I don't know what to say. And I think that is much better than just ignoring them. That's really articulate. I think a lot of people need to hear that. I need to hear that uh, for sure. That's a really good way of expressing it. Thank you. Oh, there she goes. You're going to end the meeting. So if you were to uh, give your <laughs> Heather's top three tips for being a good listener, if you had to, if I had to put up an infographic, bing, Heather's top three tips, Izzy, stop it. What would they be? What? What would your... Just kidding. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> good one. <laughs> I figured I needed to put that in there somewhere. <laughs> Let's see, top three tips for listening. Gee, well, first of all, be quiet so you can listen. 
you know, by quiet, I mean like also quiet your brain, stop it from thinking what you're going to say next. Mm. Taking a lead off of that little piece of advice I got from some counseling is to, uh, when you have the space in the conversation to do so, repeat back the person's concerns, which as you heard them and allow them to correct you, mm. um, which is, you know, actively showing your engagement and also measuring whether you fully understand mm-hmm. what's being expressed. Thirdly, well, as you said, uh, you know, the worst thing a friend can do who has been a listener in the past is withdraw because mm-hmm. they don't have anything else to say. Uh, but as you pointed out, that's not the point. You saying something is not the point. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I guess point number three would be show up to listen again. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? Are there other things that we should cover or? or... Uh, I think uh, that you should address humor. Oh. Yes. And whether it's helpful or not to, you know, if you have some pretty grave uh, feelings or uh, if you have a, you know, if you're going through a time of darkness, is there a time when humor is not appropriate? (laughs) you'll have to let me know (laughs) well so uh that is a great question whether or not humor is appropriate and i love humor i i don't think i will ever be offended with humor at dark situations um in fact i think my therapist thinks i need to work on that (laughs) she's like um this isn't funny why are you laughing it's a little funny because Sometimes I, you know, sometimes things just get so heavy and so uncomfortable that my, my natural human response is, is to, um, make it light. And that's a coping mechanism mechanism of which I am totally aware. And I think, you know, me well, like we're friends, we know each other well enough that, you know, that you can use humor and it's like, that's great. I love it. I, I think if you're really close with someone. I think you can tell when humor is not appropriate. Mm-hmm. Uh, For me, it's a survival mechanism uh, because we live in, I mean, every era lives in heavy times. I don't know. It, it's centering for me to be able yeah. to laugh. And, you know, again, that, that shouldn't be someone's, you know, a listener's goal to make someone laugh because, um, you know, you don't have to have a handful of jokes up your sleeve every time <laughs> destiny calls. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I think humor, I think humor is great. And if you want to try it with a friend who's down in the dumps, you could always ask first. You could say, hey, would some humor make you feel better? Mm-hmm. And if they're like, no, I would probably be a jerk and still try it anyways, because that's <laughs> sometimes the only way I know how to communicate. So uh, me too. Yeah. I, I'm a fan of humor. I think it's not for everyone probably, but I like it. I'm glad we're on the same wavelength. Yeah. Cause the uh, humor, I think all the videos that I've been doing, interviewing people about depression, uh, <laughs> we're laughing our beeps <laughs> through most of it. So I have to share something with you. I'm gonna look it up. So I, um, quote it correctly by the Swiss moral philosopher, poet, and critic, Henri Frédéric Amiel, 1821-1881. Anyway, it's just, life is short and we have little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the dark journey along with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Well, that's nice. So it sums it up. Yeah. Be kind. And maybe you would expand that to be empathetic. Uh, yes. Yeah. We have little time to understand, to really understand that we're all in this together. And if you, if you can lend someone a, ha- a helping hand, even just by being an ear. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm, Got to remember that. That's nice. Yeah. That's good. I like that. Well, this has been really great. And in closing, I would just like to thank you for being such a good listener. What? <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh i love it but this has been really great i so appreciate you talking 
to us. And I bet I'll get questions on, you know, please elaborate more on how to be a good listener. So maybe we can do it again and give some more tidbits. Yeah. And if anyone wants me to listen to them, you can just give them my direct cell phone number. Just kidding. It's <laughs> like, ooh. Um, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Well, so folks, you can have depression and anxiety and still have a good friend like Heather. <laughs> so thank you. There's a feather in your cap. Yes. All right, let's wave goodbye to the people. Bye the people. Bye the kitties.